Yes, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. In today's video, I have three main news stories that you need to know if you're a crypto investor, including Celsius and bankruptcy, the Matic token and Disney, Ripple versus the SEC update, and much more. So like always, check the timestamps down below in the video description, tap that like button, and let's jump in starting with Celsius. The Celsius network has officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and even though the crypto lender right now has over $167 million in cash on hand, they will continue to freeze customer withdrawals. So let's dig into these details, starting with a direct statement from their bankruptcy filing on why they chose to halt withdrawals in the first place. Today's filing follows the difficult but necessary decision that was made last month by Celsius to pause withdrawals, swaps, and transfers on its platform to stabilize its business and protect its customers. Without a pause, the acceleration of withdrawals would have allowed certain customers, i.e. those who were first to act, to be paid in full while leaving other customers behind. So in other words, Celsius was over leveraged and to prevent a bank run, they froze everybody's assets. Now in a direct quote from Alex Mashinsky, CEO, he said, on this filing for bankruptcy. This is the right decision for our community and company. We have a strong and experienced team in place to lead Celsius through this process. I am confident that when we look back at the history of Celsius, we will see this as a defining moment where acting with resolve and confidence served the community and strengthened the future of the company. Um, okay. What do you think about that statement? I think people are going to look back and most likely look at Celsius as a failure for over leveraging their company and putting all their clients funds in danger. Now, an important distinction is with this chapter 11 bankruptcy, if they were able to return all of their clients funds in the future, they do still have the ability to rewrite some of their narrative, their legacy in crypto, and they are still going to try because they did file for chapter 11 and not just chapter seven. Celsius filing chapter 11, like Voyager, bankruptcy. With chapter 11, the debtor negotiates with creditors to alter the terms of the loan without having to liquidate sell-off assets. Unlike chapter seven, where they have to sell off the assets. Still hope for Celsius depositors. So let's talk about the potential of what could happen. As one crypto user says, Let's see how things develop. I'm predicting some sort of buyout of the assets, including us. We may take a haircut, but we will finally have some news. And that's true. The biggest unknown in all this is how many more loans and debts does Celsius still have to pay off? And while I can't see any new users, any new crypto investors choosing to go back on Celsius's platform once they open things up, technically, the company is not going away. The sell token, as of now, is not going away. In fact, some analysts are seeing a recovery for the sell token despite Celsius's bankruptcy announcement. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't see the future, can't see the future, nor can these analysts. It is just speculation. But the reason that some people are saying that sell token might recover, not me, yet some people are saying that, the reason is, a Chapter 11 filing is frequently referred to as a reorganization bankruptcy, meaning, and as we sort of mentioned, the debtor, Celsius, remains in possession of and may continue to operate the business and can borrow new money with court approval. The code is mostly used by large businesses to help them reorganize their business debts and repay their creditors while continuing their operations. And of course, in two months, six months, a year from now, if Celsius did continue their operations, the sell token previously was used in exchange for services and as a reward on Celsius, with wallet balances having over 20% of their holdings in sell tokens, if they had at least 20% in their wallets of their wallets in sell tokens, they obtained a 30% bonus interest and 30% loan interest discount. And that's exactly what got them trouble in the first place. So they will never be offering something like this again. But even if, you know, they took it down to maybe, you know, they got a 7% bonus or a 5% bonus, I don't see the trust coming back to deposit my money into Celsius. That's me. Again, let me know what you think down below. 
But again, what this article is arguing and what some other people are saying is that Celsius will recover eventually. As I get more info, I will keep you updated. And next piece of news involving Polygon Matic, Polygon joins Disney's Accelerator program to develop AR, NFT, and AI experiences. So if you hold Matic, this is a huge win, huge show of support from Disney. Polygon is now one of six companies selected to participate in Disney's 2022 Accelerator program, a business and development program designed to spur the growth of innovative companies around the world. And specifically for 2022, the focus of this program will be the program, which begins this week, is looking to develop new technologies within augmented reality, non-fungible tokens, and artificial intelligence. And why this is so cool if you hold Polygon is because, one, not only does Disney have a ton of IP that has not been NFTized yet, but two, what Polygon will receive from Disney in this program, during the course of the program, each participating company will receive guidance from Disney's senior leadership team, as well as a dedicated executive mentor. Polygon is the only blockchain native platform selected in this six company lineup. So the communication is there. Polygon will be learning about Disney's needs and Disney will be learning how to develop in this brave new world on the Polygon blockchain. And next piece of big news for Ripple versus the SEC. This just happened two days ago. Ripple scores a win against the SEC as the judge slams agency's hypocrisy. So the SEC's hypocrisy. Here are the key takeaways. On Tuesday, U.S. Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn denied the SEC's motion to keep the infamous Hinman speech under wraps. We'll talk, I'll remind you of what this is in a second. But in justifying this ruling, Judge Netburn called the SEC's litigation tactics a hypocrisy and slammed the agency for putting its own goals before the faithful allegiance to the law. Legal experts have dubbed the decision a body slam and a significant tactical win for Ripple. And I would tend to agree with this, that Ripple did just have a small win here. And just as a reminder on what the Hinman speech is, on June 14th, 2018, Hinman, who had been since retired from the SEC, spoke at Yahoo Finance's All Market Summit, a crypto one-day event in San Francisco, in which he remarked on the agency's use of the Howey test to determine whether ETH constitutes a security. And famously, he said ETH wasn't a security under the Howey test in that speech. In a direct quote, he said, So when I look at Bitcoin today, I don't see a central third party whose efforts are key, a key factor in determining the success of that enterprise. The network on which Bitcoin functions is operational, appears to have been decentralized for some time, perhaps from inception. Applying the disclosure regime of the federal securities laws to the offer and resale of Bitcoin would seem to add little value. Moreover, putting aside the fundraising that accompanied the creation of Ether, based on my understanding of the present state of Ether, the Ethereum network, its decentralized structure, we believe current offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions. As with Bitcoin, applying a disclosure regime, uh, the disclosure regime of the federal securities laws to current transactions and Ether would seem to add little value. So he was saying that well, maybe the ICO of Ethereum, maybe you would consider that a security. The current Ethereum network does not meet the criteria of a security by SEC standards, in his opinion. Now, why does Ripple care? Well, Ripple has argued that Hinman's remarks contradict the SEC's claims that XRP is a security, meaning XRP should fall under similar standards. In contrast, the SEC, the agency, has fought hard to keep the speech under wraps and block it from being used as evidence in court, asserting that it is a purely personal errand and doesn't reflect agency policy. So the SEC was saying that those were Hinman's personal views, not the agency's views. But surprisingly, Judge Netburn disagrees. She's siding with Ripple. As of two days ago, she said, the hypocrisy in arguing to the court on the one hand, that the speech is not relevant to the market's understanding of how or whether the SEC will regulate currency, and on the other hand, that Hinman sought 
and obtained legal advice from the SEC counsel in drafting that speech suggests that the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its own desired goal and not out of a faithful allegiance to the law. Wow. So the speech stays in. She's saying that this speech does represent the SEC's views back then in some sense, and it should be on record in this case. That is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow. Appreciate you.